The head of the Senate Banking Committee pushing back against the Volcker Rule. He's a Democrat, by the way. That's Chris Dodd. And that Volcker Rule calls for the breakup of banks. Take a look at the Wall Street Journal headline. Dodd blast bank proposal and... As it says there, he's a Democrat. Is the Volcker Rule dead or alive? Joining us from Capitol Hill is a member of the Senate Banking Committee. He's a Republican, Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Thanks for joining us, Senator Corker. Good to be with you. So tell us, um, yesterday, I know it was only one hearing. What is the status of this Volcker Rule now? Well, there is going to be another hearing tomorrow where Goldman's and sort of the private sector side of the issue will be looked at. I, I think that, look, everybody here wants to figure out a way to minimize risk and certainly does not, we don't want taxpayer dollars supporting, uh, you know, unnecessary risk taking and all that. I think the Volcker rule, though, uh, came at a time that was unusual, number one. But number two, the bigger issue is there are a lot of, it, it's semi-abstract. And as you get into it, you wonder whether there aren't other mechanisms that could accomplish the same thing. Well, I think one, it, one of the things you've talked about yesterday in the hearing is that there's already a mechanism. The impression you'd get from listening to President Obama is that it's possible to take money from the, the government guaranteed deposit money and for banks to invest that in hedge funds and risky investments. But there are rules on the books already that prohibit that, aren't there? Yeah, you're the only person, by the way, that emailed me yesterday with that. There's 23, <laughs> 23 uh, after I said it, I, I was, uh, you know, 23A and B of the Federal Reserve Act prohibits uh, that activity and we've talked about it in hearings with Bernanke and for some reason there's just been no real uptake generally about the fact that those types of things already are prohibited. You can only use a, a very minimal amount of the bank's capital in other areas of a bank holding company. In addition to that, to actually move capital permanently, you've got to, to, to reduce the capital of the commercial bank also. So, so I so do Senator wonder... Yes, go ahead. It, it, basically, you're saying that, that those who think that this is simply a punitive move by the Obama administration are right. Am I reading you correctly? Well, let me say this. Uh, look, uh, again, Paul Volcker is like a folk hero here, okay? And, and uh, there's no question. I mean, his anti-inflation uh, uh, efforts were, were tremendously appreciated. The timing of the announcement, I mean, I think mm -hmm. everybody on all sides would say it's pretty transparently political. That doesn't mean that, that, look, we don't need to continue to look at ways of, of dealing with this. I, I don't think that it got a great reception yesterday. Again, we've got one more hearing tomorrow uh, with Goldman's and others, and we're going to drill down in, in another way. But uh, my sense is there's not a lot of traction on it because there are mechanisms in place, okay. as Steve just mentioned, to, to deal with this. Now, Meantime, maybe, they, Senator, maybe they need to be strengthened, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're certainly going to be right. looking at that. Meantime, Senator, uh, Maybe we've gotten diverted onto the wrong thing. We're arguing over the $90 billion TARP tax. We're arguing over this. When credit default swaps, transparency needed, and capital reserve requirements needed, and toxic assets still loom over the markets. We're not doing anything about those and two areas, are we? Authority. Well, I do think I do think we're going to have a very strong resolution authority that will put banks, absolute, uh, bank holding companies, financial institutions, absolutely out of business if they fail. So I think as as Mr. Volker is looking at this, it's not through the lens that regulation probably will have draconian steps as it relates to resolving bad institutions, well, what putting about the them out of business. That that the, 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 the derivatives. I think there's going to be uh, certainly some capital issues there. There's going to be some clearinghouse issues. Issues put in place, Judge Sen Gregg, and Sen 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 Senator let, let me ask you this question: Sitting right here, right now, do you believe there will be a bipartisan regulatory reform bill, first agreed in the Senate, and then to come out of Congress? Well, I do. I hope so. I'm working daily towards that end. I will tell you that Washington, uh, the destructive forces in this community are huge well, and let, let, there are people let, let, let working ask, against that but I, I do hope that that's where and I think it'll address many of the issues that each of you have brought up today. Does, does, and I the, think Volcker do rule, so, does the Volcker rule make that bipartisan bill less possible? Well, I, well, first of all, I'm not sure the Volcker rule is going to be part of a bill. Oh. And, and I think that, that, let me say this, though, everybody's work, the capital standards that would be required right. uh, go a long ways towards addressing the very issue. In other words, if, if risk taking is, is involved, capital standards, uh, capital is going to have to be much higher. So I think there are numbers of things that are getting at the very same issue that Mr. Volcker brought forth yesterday. And so I think we have to look 
look at it in the lens of what's going to pass, if it passes, and whether the Volcker piece is, is necessary or not, when we have all these other components at play right now, Senator dealing Parker, with the rip, yes. I, I, I run out of time. I really want to ask you, Ray LaHood's comments this morning about Toyota, you were so involved with what was going on with GM and Chrysler. Any concerns about the conflict of interest that the government has when it talks about Toyota but has, or you have thousands of Toyota workers down in Tennessee whose jobs are on the line here as a result, any concerns about a conflict of interest between the U.S. government saying things about Toyota when they have an investment in GM? And, and we actually don't have Toyota in Tennessee for what it's worth. Uh, we, we tried to recruit them. They actually went to Mississippi. We did get Volkswagen. Maybe we dodged a bullet there. I don't know. But, uh, you yeah, know, could certainly, be. certainly I, I think in the atmosphere that exists here, there's always concerns about uh, conflicts of interest. I would not assess that as it relates to the Transportation Secretary. I don't really know what all has been said this morning. I was just listening in. To, uh, I've been dealing with bank regulation. I understand there's been a lot of turmoil. Uh, but but look, uh, uh, I think the fact is that all of us understand we need to move away from government ownership of any company so that even right. the thought that a conflict might exist uh, should go away. Senator right. Corker, thank you very thank much. You.